Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Savvy Cast. This is Jamie, and I'm so thankful that you're here today, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. Today, I am going to have a guest that's going to give us all of the inside scoop on travel. Travel is on a lot of our minds right now. It's the beginning of the year. My guest today has much experience in travel. Wendy Copeland founded All About Travel in 2005. So she has spent 18 years curating very unique trips for individuals and for families. Her agency takes care of every aspect of travel from the planning process up until you and your luggage arrive home. Wendy was raised in the Birmingham area. She is a wife and a mother. And I have to let you know, she is the mother to my dear Finley Copeland, who it has been with Family Savvy for years and with whom I could not live without. So I cannot wait to dig into all things travel in 2024. So without further ado, I would love to welcome to the Savvy Cast, Wendy Copeland. Wendy, welcome to the Savvy Cast. I'm so grateful that you're joining today. Thank you for having me. Okay, Wendy, I am always start with an icebreaker question. You've been on my podcast, but it was years ago with your wonderful husband, different topic. So now I think I need to ask you again, the icebreaker question, what would you choose as your last meal? Well, I probably have two. Um, one is coconut lobster, which we had in Jamaica. Oh, uh, yeah. Brought to the beach by a butler. So oh, how can you beat God. that? Uh -uh. But if I was home and the hot sun was on, Jamie, I can put away some hot Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Who couldn't? Who <laughs> that couldn't not go on it that way? You know, from Krispy Kreme to heaven. <laughs> Hopefully. Exactly. So yeah. hot Krispy Kreme. Oh, I love it. Well, Wendy, I'm so grateful that you are here today to help us navigate travel in 2024. You've had 18 plus years of experience. So I've had questions from some of my Instagram followers. So I'm going to ask some of those. And then I think you've also got some of your best tips to share with us as well. So we're going to dig right in. Um, Wendy, let's just start with probably the most obvious. Why would someone want to use a travel agent rather than just planning things themselves? Good question. And I've got several good reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, years ago, people used travel agents. And then people kind of now, sometimes when I talk to people, they're like, I didn't even know there were still travel agents out there because, you know, you can go online and book so much yourself now. So, you know, you do go, hey, w why do I need a travel agent? Well, for one, a lot of people don't realize our services are free to you. Um, we get paid commission from, you know, hotels, cruise lines and all. So it's not costing you any more to book through us. So mm. that's, that's a huge perk. Um, you know, our services mm -hmm. are free. So mm -hmm. um, it saves you time and stress. I mean, it's time consuming to book a good quality trip. Um, time is money. So it, mm -hmm. it saves you time and it saves you stress. If you don't really know the ins and outs of where you're going, then you know, you could run into issues. So it saves you time um, and money. Uh, that That's really huge. And also oh, yeah. the money aspect is we get um, bulk rates. We have access to some unpublished fares. So what you may oh. see online at certain places, you know, we may can get the same exact hotel for at least that typically lower. And mm. so um, I know for, for me personally, um, we guarantee our rates. So, you know, I, I tell my clients, hey, if you ever see something and, and, and it's apples to apples, we at least price match it, if not beat it. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's good to know. So, I mean, we can, we can save you um, time. It can save you money. Um, and, and one thing too is, 
we try to make everything seamless and Mm -hmm. smooth for your trip. But, you know, there are instances where things have happened. I've had clients go somewhere and get there and call me and go, we don't have the room we booked. Mm -hmm. And you feel so bad for them. But Mm -hmm. the difference is, is I I mean, I tell them, give me a few minutes, go Mm -hmm. have lunch and I'm going to get this settled for you. And, I love and that. So I love instead, that. Yeah. Instead of they're standing at a, a front desk trying to, yeah. you know, frustrated, it's like, just go have lunch. Give me right. a few minutes and we're going to get you to what you, you know, you should have. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Uh, I love <laughs> that. I mean, that's such a, a peace of mind because I'm not the best traveler. So to have someone say, just go have lunch and yeah. it'll be solved. That is fabulous. That's concierge service right there. Yeah, they, you know, and, and the goal is to not have that happen. But, you know, there are right. occasions, it's rare, but uh, if that happens, that's one thing is is that we will uh, advocate, for, you know, we will advocate for you to mm-hmm. to make sure things go as smooth and you get what you've, you've paid for. Right. And, um, so, so that's big. And one thing, um, and that was on a smaller end of the spectrum, but even say, I'll, I'll just go back to COVID mm-hmm. when that COVID came. I mean, you know, yeah. travel was just yeah about non-existent. Um, yeah. And so we had many, many trips on the books and um, we had to basically get them undone. And I had many people that called me that didn't use us to, to book their trip and saying, mm-hmm. I can't get my refund. Is there anything you can do? There's not, if I didn't book it. But yeah. I will say for every, it was well over 50 trips and every single client of mine got a full refund of their money back. Oh, you know, that's huge. That, that that's, is, it, that's again, huge. you know, it, it was big and it's not just that. I know for, you know, most people, even if you got your money, you could have spent hours on the phone going yeah. round and round. So, oh, yeah. you know, it was nice for them not to have to handle it. And, you know, it took a little longer than normal, of course. Yeah. yeah. But in the end, it, you know, everybody got their money back. And I, that was, that was really That's huge. Good. Well, so, when, uh, what type, I mean, uh, what type of trips do you plan? I've, I've talked with, I've told everyone that your daughter is my near and dear sidekick has helped build family savvy and I've heard her talking about some of the trips y'all have taken but what kind of trips do you plan for people we do our name's all about travel and we pretty much do all we really do um family vacations first of all we work with um groups I do Mm -hmm. some church groups we do senior citizen groups I do Mm. senior groups high school college senior groups Mm. we really work with a whole host um do a lot of honeymoons and I love honeymoons because oh, you know yeah. it's a it's a once in a lifetime trip, yeah it's supposed to be <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah anything can happen Zane and I had a little <laughs> incident on the way back a breakdown but we were in car a car but oh my goodness what are most of your clients interested in is it cruise is it just a destination we do a lot of cruises and we do everything from just a uh basic short Caribbean, more on the uh, value side of cruises. And then I also book a lot of river cruises, um, Mm. luxury cruises. Uh, Europe has been huge the last couple Mm -hmm. of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so even doing that with doing, you know, some cruises uh, through your river cruises, um, but just land. I mean, it really... Italy, France, it has Mm. been Germany. Those have been huge the last two years. And uh, so we really do all sorts. And we do classic vacations. I do a lot of Disney. Mm -hmm. Um, And and we do just the national parks. I mean, we talk about Europe and being away, but there's so much here Mm -hmm. just in the U.S., even your smaller trips to Asheville, to Biltmore, Mm -hmm. to part like that. So we do a big, a big variety. Um, Well, I can tell you that I'm the kind that I have very specific parameters and it's a dream to have someone to say, okay, I want this, this, this. I want to travel like this. I want a guide. I don't want a guide. I mean, to me, this is a, I don't know why anybody would not have a travel agent. It's just like a wedding planner. 
they know the vendors, they know the industry. We've used a wedding planner for both of our daughter's weddings. To me, you're a trip planner, a vacation planner, and your expertise. And I mean, I just think it makes sense. So I'm, I'm so glad to hear all of this that you do. But I want to ask you this, and I think I know the answer, but everyone wants to know where a travel agent's personal favorite place is. What is your, the, your favorite place you've ever traveled? Well, I say I still have a huge bucket list, Jamie. I'm sure I will leave this world and not complete all the places I want to go, but mm -hmm. been to a lot. And this will surprise a lot of people because it, it's not as extravagant as you think. Um, but we absolutely, I think we've been 13 or 14 times. Negril, Jamaica is just one of my favorite places. Oh. Um, and what is, I, what do you love about it? The beach is absolutely stunning. The beach is just gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, Negril, Jamaica in particular, but the beach mm -hmm. is gorgeous. Um, the people are so friendly. Um, the food is great. Who doesn't like some good jerk chicken? Oh yes. Um, yeah. Some of the resorts we've been service has just been impeccable. I mean, really, really good. So that, and it's a short flight. We like that. Hey, in two hours, we can be there. Um, you know, oh, is that like just a, a two hour flight from Birmingham? Yeah, just, just a little wow. bit, a couple hours. So it's, it's wow. really nice. So that, those are some of the reasons why we like it. And it's actually a very reasonably priced destination for what you get. Oh, well that, I mean, I would never have thought of that. That's a, that's a good thing to know. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot of people might want to put that on their bucket list. So, um, well, okay. We're starting out 2024 new year. What are some of your best travel tips? I will say as far as air, um, j just a tip, if you can book your flight earlier during the day, you're less likely to be delayed um, just because, you know, one delay typically snowballs down mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, you're less likely to have the afternoon thunderstorms that can roll in that cause delays. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, flying out earlier during the day, you're less likely to have um, flight delays. So that that's really good. And passports. A lot of people don't realize, check your passports. Um, I've had oh, some, yeah. Yeah. Um, check your passports before, before you go. And many places require that your passport has to have at least six months validity, validity left on it. Oh, goodness. So, you know, when you look at the expiration date, especially traveling abroad, you need to be sure that it's good for at least six months after your travel dates. Okay, now I have a question. This may be a, a dumb question. Do you have to have a passport for Negril? You do. So what? Okay, but there are some all-inclusives that you don't, right? I, I some destinations you can go that that you know don't require a passport for U.S. travelers. Um, you know we've got the Virgin Islands, right. U.S. territory. So you okay. know there, but it pretty much, pretty much everywhere out of the U.S. territory to okay. fly, you have to have a passport. Um, that tip, that right there, is worth this whole entire podcast because. My daughter got into a situation. She missed a fabulous trip because she, her passport and we called and actually I'm going to an event tonight with our congressman and they're, they're the ones you call for your district to try. He said, you don't know how many college students I have already tried to help because their passports were not. Uh, and, and he tried, he couldn't help, you know, it because you're dependent upon wherever they're traveling there's, there's a lot of red tape. So be prepared. That's, that is a great tip with your passport. Yes, it is. Uh, Check it ahead of time. Well, can I ask you this? Is there a better day of the week to buy plane or air travel? Is, like do prices vary based on day of the week? I wouldn't necessarily based on day of the week. We used to hear, hey, purchase on Tuesday or Wednesday for lower fares. Mm -hmm. I really don't know if that is holding true anymore. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Now, of course, traveling on, you know, avoiding the weekends sometimes and all that definitely can help. There are less, less expensive days to travel, but as far as purchasing them, um, you know, Tuesday, Wednesdays, what they, they typically say, but I'm not a hundred percent really sold on that from what down. I have found to no. know. Well, I want to ask you this. This is um off the cuff, but I've always wondered for people who like me, I am a very skittish traveler and I, you know, over a few hours, I would like to travel first class. Are there any t- secrets to getting a good deal on first class? Like, you know, there are empty seats. Like, are there any tips for trying to get that on a trip? Really on first class, um, if it's a deal breaker, you better just buy it up front and bite the bullet. But if you're uh-huh. willing to hold off and you'll just be happy if you get it, but okay, if you don't, mm-hmm. waiting a little bit closer and then seeing how much the upgrade is, sometimes can be um, less economical. Mm. Um, you know, if, if you wait to see closer to your flight and it's still there, sometimes the upgrades won't be near as much as just purchasing it right up front. But again, it is a gamble. You you could get it or they could be gone. So it's just a matter of, hey, right. it's a deal breaker for you. We had some questions from my Instagram um, friends. Um, Becky uh, at Hey, it's Becky wants to know what is the best time of year to travel to Scotland? That's been a place I've always wanted to go. This is interesting. Yeah, really for Scotland, um, just like most most places in Europe, through the summer, it's going to be busier. Um, mm-hmm. June, July, August. Great, but it's going to be busier. May is a good time. A lot of your flowers and all are starting to bloom. The weather's a lot milder, so it's not so hot, but yet it's starting not to be so chilly. Um, mm-hmm. It's not near as busy. Um, so May, May is really a good time to go. And again, um, September, October are very good months to go. It's, it's, it's a little bit cooler, but not bad weather, still mm-hmm. not so busy. October actually may even be a little bit better than September, just because September does tend to have a little more rain, mm-hmm. but it's not, you know, it's not bad. So I would say if you can want to avoid the summer rush, May is great for mild temperatures, um, but things still blooming and pretty. And then again, September and October can be really good months to go there as well. That is great. Okay. Well, Lisa, and she is at Lisa DLY. She said, what are your recommendations for Punta Cana? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, Punta Cana. Punta Cana. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) A little country drawl of mine. Okay, so Punta Cana, what are your recommendations for that? We love it there. Um, Bavaro Beach, I think personally, is the the better beach there. So if you can get a place that's along Bavaro Beach, um, that is the preferred place. Um, I will say there are many, many good all-inclusives. Some favorites that I would say, Ibero Star Grand Bavaro is a great one um, for adults only, Mm -hmm. sort of a resort and a resort, really like that. Um, The excellence in Punta Cana is very nice. And then um, Majestic, we've stayed at the Majestic Elegance ourselves, and we've really enjoyed that. So all three of those are very nice, higher-end, all-inclusive resorts. Um, And that's one thing about Punta Cana, it's it's another a reasonable destination that you can get a very good all-inclusive at. Oh, okay. Good That's good quality experience. Maybe Lisa will reach out to you to handle that. Because Sounds great. Got some good insight. Lucia, she is at Wollstonehome.lucia. Home, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But she says, how do I pack lightly for a trip or a cruise to Spain or Lake Como? That's sort of a packing, but that is a big deal. <laughs> Probably some of, not arguments, but just tension is is our travel because my husband knows how to pack. I don't. And it's always like, oh, so what are your best <laughs> tips for that? Because you've traveled so much yourself as well, but this is a trip out of the country. So what, what are your tips? I feel hypocritical to answer this <laughs> because I'm going to tell you to pack light and I have the hardest time doing that. So I think I, it's a I, woman I think thing. That- 
<laughs> I want to take the house with me. But yeah. <laughs> um, really for that trip, I can say this, um, going to Europe and especially where you're going to different destinations, you may be taking the train over there. You really do want to pack light. Um, and of course, it depends the time of year now, but typical summer for there, think long, flowy dresses, floppy hats, mm. um, very comfortable shoes for walking. Um, at Lake Como, you know, you're at the water, you're going to need mosquito spray. Don't forget mm -hmm. to take that. Um, but just go light. I mean, um, do carry for that trip. You would want to take a, a cardigan or a light jacket for early mornings in the evening as it does get a little bit cool. Comfy, comfy shoes. So important. And just go light. I, I even say for that, like a medium sized spinner suitcase is great mm. for Europe. Even even if you end up having to take a couple, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I would go with that because if you're uh, on the rail, the medium sized spinners typically fit overhead, so that makes it easier getting on and off the train instead of having to have it sewed underneath and weight on it now. So just right. think light, flowy, airy, and uh, I always That's say back a little less than you think. Yeah, yeah, you can rewear a lot of things. <laughs> If you're not it, like hot and perspiring. Right. But, okay. Now I want to ask you this because I've been wanting to get, I'm not a big, let's get out in the middle of the ocean person, but I've wanted to go on a river cruise. Now I've learned just in conversation and I really haven't done a lot of research. That's expensive. Uh, uh, river cruises are on the higher end. Is that I mean, unless maybe the Memphis, <laughs> the one locally, but, but is there a way to, why is river cruising more expensive and is there a way to have one that's a little more budget friendly? There are typically, yes. River cruises overall tend to be more expensive than your everyday ocean cruise without a doubt. The experience is so much more intimate. The ships are sm much smaller um, a lot less people and all, maybe mm -hmm. that's kind of why it's more, uh, mm -hmm. not sure on that, but it, but it is, but the whole experience is, like I said, it is more intimate. Um, a lot of them, a lot more, um, customer service focus, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, your meals, beverages and whatnot. Um, really is there are some things i mean right now there's a, several companies that really have some very good deals going on where um your airfare they're taking like seven eight hundred dollars off each person for your airfare um and, oh. and got reduced fare so there are some right now in fact yesterday i just booked one and it's going out of uh amsterdam so in the spring and, and you can go and see kukanoff gardens and see thousands of tulips blooming and it is absolutely stunning and oh. then it ends up in Basel and Switzerland and so there's you know so much to see and do there and so river cruises um they they do run more than ocean cruises typically mm -hmm. um, but you can there are there are some deals out there from time to time where you can really get get a lot of bang for your buck on them so it's mm -hmm. just it's just booking them at the right the right time what would you, I just have a few more questions because I know you um, have other things going on as well, but um, if someone wanted to take a road trip and we're in the, the Southeast, let's say we wanted to take a road trip up the Eastern coast, what is just a really lovely one that you can do in a few days and beautiful foliage? What would be one of your favorite two or three? One that I would say is very popular and wonderful is a lot of my clients like to start it in Boston, uh, fly into Boston, mm. get a car um, and start from there. And there is so much that you can do. You can go up to Bar Harbor, um, mm. Portland, just some beautiful areas that you can stop along the way and just do a couple nights and, and, that's one thing too. We set a good itinerary for you from, from the car to every hotel. We can set some dinner reservations along the way. We can do as much or as little as you want, but that makes for a very good week vacation. If you, you land in Boston, get the car and then go up the East coast. And like I said, Bar Harbor, Maine is really neat. Portland, um, Newport, just a lot of really neat places that you can just stop for a couple days 
and uh, see that and then go on another hour or two. So it's not like long drives each day and then uh, come back and fly back out of Boston. And that, that makes for a really, really neat week trip. And uh, September, October, it is gorgeous. You would want to go in the fall but for the foliage. Primarily, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have Okay, uh, one more I do have to ask. My daughter and her, my one of my daughters who recently got married, they went on a honeymoon and she said, Mom, it, it blew my mind. It, but I, and I may not be pronouncing it right, Mackinac Island. Yes, yes. She said, "Mom, and that is in the United. It's not a far trip. What do you know? Tell us about Mackinac Island because now I've I've heard it's not a, an inexpensive trip. No, it's not. In fact, that's probably a little pricier place, but it's just kind of a quaint, small." Um, area, lots of neat little places to eat and all. I've had several people go there and I've always had good feedback. I have not been there, but I would love to. But it is on the little pricier side, um, but it is really unique. That's a really neat. But we do have so many places, you know, we always think about you don't have to go far on a plane necessarily or mm -hmm. a ship or whatever. Just in the U.S., we we have so many neat places. I mean, we have all of our national parks and I arrange a lot of trips doing, you know, Yellowstone and uh, Glacier. We mm -hmm. do a lot of the national parks. And in California, I mean, we've got what Big Sur, which is absolutely a stunning mm. coastline to mm. get a, a convertible and, and, you know, make a road trip of mm. the coast that's absolutely gorgeous so there's we have a lot just right here and I even mentioned just like Asheville it's beautiful to go in the fall and mm -hmm. more and all and that's not terribly far so we do um a lot abroad but there is so much you know that's even on this side that uh Charleston Savannah you know there's some neat places for just long extended weekend getaways right we from, you know, a small weekend getaway all the way to an extravagant trip. We do some really unique things, African safaris, where you, you go mm -hmm. out and stay, um, you know, out on a reserve. You have game drives each day, and there's spa experiences, um, all your food by private oh. chefs. So it can be really luxurious yeah. and a neat experience. Um, Dubai, I mean, we do trips to Dubai. Yeah. Think about yeah. you. You know, you can go up to a Bar Khalifa and have high tea, you know, what is oh. the tallest structure in the world. Yeah. So some really unique ones. And you ride a camel out to the desert and um, have lunch and all. So there, you know, we do from a weekend getaway to Gatlinburg to really extravagant and everything in between as much as you want us to do or as little as you want us to do. That's, that's what we do. And really, I try to listen to our clients because you know, that's how I get what this trip, what they want out of this trip. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, you know, and, and we try right. to work within everybody's budget. Not everybody has the same budget. Right. So we kind of work within their budget and what they envision is, you know, I like to listen. And once I know what they're thinking of it, then, Hey, I can match you with the right destination or resort. I so, love that. Well, I will tell you, I'm going to be reaching out to you for some travels, the ideas for, for our family, because now that we've got some sons-in-law, Zane said, you know, we need to take some trips to create some memories. So you're the perfect person to talk to because you do listen and you know so much and you have the sweetest spirit. And I'm just, oh, Aww. I'm excited about um, getting to work with you. Now, Wendy, I know that there are going to be people who want to get in touch with you and we're going to put everything in the show notes Right. So we'll put your website. So so if they're interested in reaching out to you, what's your best way? Is it just to email you or call or how do you prefer to work? Email or call is great. And also from our website, there's a link on there that you can contact us through there. So really any of that is fine. Email, call through the website. You can message us. All of that works great. Um, and if anybody, uh, any new clients that haven't used us before use us and they let me know, hey, we, you know, we found you through Family Savvy, be glad to take $100 off their first trip. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't know you were going to offer that. Thank you. I, yes. I'm sure people are going to take you up on that. So if they mention Family Savvy, you get $100 off your trip. So that's right. 
That's great. Well, Wendy, thank you so much. The, no, thank this you is, for having me. I really feel honored and I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you and I'll be hopefully talking to you soon about a trip. And until next time, you have a fabulous rest of your day and you're welcome back. Anytime you have any new tips or any new information to share, you always have a place at the table. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Okay, have a great one. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Savvy Cast. If you'll take the time to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, that would mean so much. As always, thank you for listening and have a blessed day. Oh, 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 oh